All right, so we're gonna start a, uh, a new table build today. And I'm not gonna take you through the process of breaking down a pallet because that's in every single other video I, I basically upload. I have a ton of extra broken down stock already from a couple other projects I just finished up. Um, and it's just a bunch of leftovers. But basically what I do is I get a pallet and I cut the slats off um, into small pieces and then remove any nails and metal and then it gets jointed one edge on the jointer and then it gets ripped to about an eighth inch over the thickness of the table. So I'm doing a one inch table on this. I would have done it to one and an eighth. So that when I stack them all up and I send them through the planer and through the, the sander, I can take a little bit off and give everything a completely even thickness. So anyways, we're gonna we're gonna use some of this scrap and and uh, get going. I'll take you through the whole process. This right here is a basket. Half inch, quarter inch. There. So we have plenty of wood to do this. We're doing a 36 inch square by 36 inch square by one inch thick dining table. We're gonna lay it out first and then we'll know exactly what amount of strips for the project we're gonna need. And I think that this is already gonna turn because it's in a different box. I think this is already ready to go. So that's good. Um, these two need to be trimmed. So we're just gonna build this, since it's a 36 inch table, we're gonna build it in 12 inch slabs, join the three slabs together. That way we can run all the slabs through our planer and get it perfectly flat when we go to join it together. Uh That'll hold flat to the table. And then this will act as a stop. So this will act as our flat surface that the wood is gonna rest up against. Thirty-six. We need twelve inch slabs. Let me go right here. We're gonna name this one twelve. What we're gonna do is just start laying pieces out in a randomized artistic pattern. We don't want our seams matching up because it's gonna create a weakness. We want our seams to overlap. So they're holding each other. You don't want to have a bunch of seams all lining up like that because it's gonna create a, a weakness, a, a, a point of weakness in the build, see? This layer is gonna hold this next layer and the layer after that will be holding this layer. So then when you stack the next layer, you, you can line up a seam like that, but you don't wanna line them up two in a row like this. So use small pieces, use bigger pieces, however you wanna do it. Right now I'm not worried about lining up the cracks. I'm just worried about getting enough length of strips to make three 12 inch slabs. Now all I'm doing is making sure that the wood, when I lay it down on the table, goes past this end of the table and my 36 inch mark. All right, so there's one. Uh, now I could the same exact thing I just did is assemble this, assemble two more of these in the same fashion, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take all these down, count the amount of piece of wood, amount of quarter inch strips, the amount of half inch strips it took to make this whole thing, and multiply it times three. So we need this amount of wood times three. And we need this amount of wood times three, including them times three. 40 pieces of wood, so we need 80 more. should make up the entirety of everything we need for the slat to build this table. I just want to tr trim square every end 
um, of those boards. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a stop block on. And then we're going to trim the end of this stop block square. You can see, like, they're not square. They're all sorts of... And some of these I'll actually take off and set aside and cut them again if they're, if they're, if they're not good enough. And then a lot of them, they'll have this mark as well, which is planar snipe, and we need to get rid of that. So if I see any with planar snipe, or I see any that are too, the ends are too messed up to get trimmed, trimmed clean in one cut, then I'll set them aside. I'll set them right here. I'll move on. So here's another one snipe. I'll trim the snipe completely off so that it fits perfectly. All right, so we got all the quarter inch strips trimmed and we just have to do the half inch now. loud fan off. I'm gonna lay everything out into the first slab and then when I, when I reach this 36 inch mark I'm going to make a mark on the wood, I'm gonna trim it to length and leave them all sitting here. And then afterwards I will then take them apart layer by layer and stack them in front and then assemble them again with glue and brass. Here's our line, 36 inches. We need to at least get over that. So about an inch is fine, we'll leave that. But if it's anything more than that, I'm gonna trim it. So I'm gonna make a mark right here. And then I'm gonna trim it on the saw. Now it's trimmed. That goes there, this goes back into the pile. We'll start a new layer. So now we're gonna take the entire thing apart, layer by layer, line it all, all the way along the table here so we have some more. So now we're gonna glue and uh, brad nail all the layers together one by one and assemble it the same exact way we took it apart. I'm using a half on two and half inch brad nails. Excuse the grinding noise. 
I put down a small bead of glue. I roll it out with just a regular foam roller. All right, so we let this one dry overnight, and uh, yeah, we're gonna make two more now. So these strips that I have, I ripped to a thickness or width, however you want to say this dimension, because it's a it's ripped to a thickness of one and an eighth, because the final thickness of the table is going to be one inch. So I'll give myself an eighth of an inch basically to to play with until these get through the planer and then go through the drum sander. Uh, so we're going to plane these down now.
So with all three pieces trimmed to the dimensions I need them to be, you know, ripped through the the table saw, uh, I make them all, all three pieces, a little bit wider than they need to be so that I can trim them on the table saw. And then I, I take the pieces individually and I make sure that they end up to the desired length, which in this case is 36 inches. So this is gonna be a 36 inch by 36 inch table. At this point, what I'm gonna do is I go through with a pen or a pencil and I mark anywhere there's gonna be a gap in the wood because there's just gonna be imperfections. You can't do anything about it. It's pallet wood, it was, it was, you know, it was garbage to begin with. So there are gonna be little imperfections in the wood. And what I do is I go around and I highlight them all. I just take my time and go piece by piece and draw little circles around where they're at. And then I come through with wood filler. Sometimes I use uh, star bond for big, um, for bigger holes, I use a little bit of a star bond with the accelerator to basically instantly dry and fill in holes. I've been using a lot more wood filler lately just because it's a little bit quicker and less expensive. My star bond's kind of a expensive product and I don't want to waste it. But basically I go through and I will just find a hole um, and I will just kind of scrape some in and move to the next one, the next one, so on and so forth. Take a little bit, force it in the hole. So I need a little more on here. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand. Just kind of buddy it in. And just fill in the gaps. And I'm not worried if a little sticks up over um, the top of these holes because this is all going to get sanded. And we're still not to the uh, total desired thickness on this yet. I leave it about a 16th inch um, larger than I require uh, so that we can send it through the drum sander enough times um, to get this cleaned off and bring it to our final thickness. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that all now and uh, stop talking. So now that our filler's dried, we're gonna run through the drum sander. All right, so that's all three of our slabs thicknessed in the drum sander. All of our marks are gone. We have a nice, clean, smooth finish. There's no gaps. We filled them all in with either wood filler or CA, and it is ready to be joined together. So we're gonna join all three of these together with uh, wood biscuits and a biscuit joiner. This one on the outside. enough to trim this entire side and over here.
turn that entire side. What we have now is I have alignment marks for the center point of the biscuit joiner on both sides. So I have it on this edge, both sides of the centerpiece, and this edge of the last piece. All right, so this is the biscuit joiner. You can see it has a little circular saw blade in there. And this is um, a really cheap one. And it kind of sucks, the blade's a little dull. I haven't replaced the blade since I got it. Um, it does the job though, you use it so little. Um, it's not really a structural thing, but it's more so for alignment, getting things per perfectly flat, flush, aligned when you're joining multiple pieces together. There is a line right in the center. That's our alignment. There's two little, uh, little cutouts right there and that center line right there. That's where we want to align the mark on our wood. And that is right there. There's one, there's one, there's one, and there's one. I like to align it and just bring the, floor, the blade forward a little bit and tap the wood. You can see it right there. If this thing will focus, see the little indents? That's from the blade. It's tapping the wood, and that's where I know that's going to be. It's a little valley that gets cut out by that blade. The blade shoots out, it cuts a little area where we're going to fill with glue, and we're going to put biscuits in. Put a little glue in there. You've got one on each side of the wood, so there's another piece coming in this way. There would be a valley right here as well. And this will be your basic, your, your alignment tool. And that'll keep everything completely flush because we're referencing the top of this board. That's how this tool references. See the, this bar sits on the top, the blade comes out, puts a pocket in, and then any other boards that you have, um, in your project are going to be referenced off the same exact top. So they'll all be cut to the same depth from the top down. Therefore, these biscuits will align them perfectly on the top. And that's what we want because we're making a table. The center one's a little tricky because you got to glue both sides of it. All right, so we're just going to put some glue on the edge here in the little valleys, just a little bit, not too much. A huge mess. immediately so you really have to be ready to get these things lined up
use this plane basically just scrape glue off surfaces. It's a uh, my grandpa's old plane, and it, there's something wrong with it. I found it tucked away in the back of his his tools after he passed away, and we had to. Uh, sell off most of his estate, but this was in the back. I'd never seen it before, and it was just tucked away in the back of his his tool storage. And it doesn't work. There's something wrong with it. You can't adjust anything out on this thing. I still want to use it. I didn't want to toss it. It's got some sentimental value to it. So I use it for mainly just scraping glue. And it's missing the, uh, there should be a knob right here as well. It'll work perfectly. Scraping glue off, because the, the blade is just barely protruding off the bottom of the plane. So we're going to go over every outside edge of this table with a uh, quarter inch round over bit in this router. So with the edges routered, we're going to move on to sanding.
Nickelodeon. glued up. We're going to clean up the glue edge on the back side of all of them and then trim them to length and then we'll get started on the skirt of the tail.
we put indicators on the legs and on the bottom of the table, so where we know which position to put our legs in. Five ounces of uh, tongue oil, and then seven ounces of mineral spirits. Apply a healthy amount on there, and the wood will just start to drink it up. So it's the following day, and I don't think we need a second coat. I think everything is holding its color quite well. 
So I think we're just gonna move on to the next step, which is all the acrylic. Uh, we will uh, install it when we get to the house.